So guess what? There's this thing called the Gold Keepers event. Look at that. This is a bill that's sponsored by, there it is, it's sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yay. So it's billionaires <laughs> trying to shape the world the way they want it, and they do it under the guise of philanthropy. And look, there's our friend John uh, Fugelsicking. He's there. He looks good in a suit. God damn, that's a nice suit. Uh, and then they, so they gave one of their awards. So they give out a award. It's uh, Gold Keepers 2022, right? 2022 Gold Keepers event. And it down says, watch the, re okay. So here it says, Bill, she's this woman, Michaela Loach, I'm going to guess that's how you brought her name. She was given an award. So they give it a little speech. Well, she wasn't going to take it sitting down. She was going to speak out against, uh, who, who is she? I'll show you who she is. She's a climate justice activist. She is a co-host of the Yikes podcast, writer and fifth-year medical student based in Edinburgh. She is, now is that Edinburgh or Edinburgh? I never know how you're supposed to say that. It's supposed to be Edinburgh, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it. She's one of the three claimants taking the UK government to court to challenge the oil and gas authorities policy in the North Sea. So she's big on, she's big on helping the climate. So she went, she said, billionaire philanthropic philanthro capitalism that's a good word mm -hmm. billionaire philanthro capitalism will not save us now she got invited to speak at the annual billionaire philanthro capitalism event and so apparently she said i couldn't oh, i could only show up in the space if i challenged it here is some what i said good for her huh yeah uh so here's what here's what some of what she said now the the only thing is I think it takes, well, I'll just show it to you and then we'll comment. I think billionaires shouldn't exist. And um, I hope that the discomfort that I'm feeling. Let me, let me start it off again, ready? Because it, it's kind of weird. I think billionaires shouldn't exist. And um, I. One person is applauding at the, <laughs> at the idea that billionaires should not exist. And I think it's unfortunate that she giggles through this almost whole thing. It takes away your, it totally. Import. Yeah. So again, she's a much better person than me in every way. And so when it, and, but I could just give her a tip. I'm not criticizing her. I'm just giving her a tip. If this ever makes it to her, that it would have more impact. Just public speaking. That's my, that's my game. That's my racket. Uh, take, you know, just straight face it. It would have, bam, you could really land it anyway. But otherwise I, everything she says, I like. I think billionaires shouldn't exist, and um, I hope that the discomfort that I'm feeling and maybe the discomfort that I cause others to feel will mean that we both can all be transformed um, through this conversation. Um, I have many challenges to philanthropic capitalism. I think the climate crisis was caused by capitalism and inequality and oppression and not an accident. So to create a liberated world, we have to really challenge these systems and go to the root, um, and we have to demand more. So she's saying challenge these systems. She's talking about the system that made the guy who's paying for this thing, Bill Gates, Bill Gates, right? That kind of a monopolistic system, it's capitalism. That's what she's saying. And, okay, which it's all good. We really can transform the world if we do that. Intersectionality demands us to see that all the struggles that exist in the world. She says intersectionality forces us. Well, well let me let me replay Sorry. it back. Inter so, okay, here we go. De demands us to, demands see us to see that all the struggles that exist in the world that all the struggles that exist in the world don't happen in silos. Intersectionality. Now, I got to admit, I, I, I'm sure this isn't a surprise to anybody. I'm ignorant of exactly what that word means. When people say intersectionality, I don't know what it means. Do you know what it means, Kit? Or what uh, they, you know, what they it, mean? It, it's, it's tough, right? It's not easy, right? No, it's not. And there's always all these weird terms. And uh, I don't know what that they, means. Intersectionality. Do you know? No. I have two. I have two. Uh, wait, wait. People we here with a, lady parts. Wait, we have the Library of Alexandria right before us. The, the hold on. What is intersectionality definition? What is the definition of intersectionality? Hang on. I have intersectionality is an analytical framework for understanding how aspects of a person's social and political identities combine to create different modes of discrimination and privilege. Intersectionality identifies multiple factors of that's advantage. That's too complicated. That says too complicated. Uh, uh, the, the one I got was the oh interconnected nature of social categorization such as race, class, gender, 
as they apply to a given individual or group regarded as creating overlapping independent systems or discrimination of, uh, or disadvantage. That's a word salad, folks. It's it's, it's hard. Words that sound smart. It's words that sound smart. I, there I, we go. I mean, it's definitely a thing. I'm just too dumb to understand it. Okay, <laughs> here we go. It can happen in silos. Everything is inherently connected. Every So happens. is that what it means? Intersectionality means everything's inherently connected. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. that's what she's saying. Well, with it, can I just clarify a little sure. bit? This is was an example of intersectionality. Intersectionality recognizes the identity markers, e.g., woman and black, do not exist independently of each other, and that each informs the others, often creating a complex conversion of oppression. Okay. Okay interrogate power as well we can't just talk about redistributing like wealth if we're not just redistributing power as well as that and so when we interrogate power we have to then ask like who who holds the power in this room who holds the power in the world who's deciding what solutions are being chosen like whose name is on the foundation who's making those decisions um, and then therefore who's creating the narratives and who's in control of those narratives and how does that maybe limit the solutions that we're pursuing and maybe we're not actually transforming the world maybe we're just continuing the world as it is now but making it look a little bit different and how can we demand more and I think I've learned a lot of, of how I view the world through previous movements in the past and that kind of collaboration and um, coalition building I think is how we're genuinely going to create a better world because we need to build power from the ground up and not from the top down. And that comes from like coming together and forming those coalitions and realizing that just because something is hurting me, it's also going to hurt you at some point or it is already hurting you in a different way. So there you go. Uh, that's news because she's calling out billionaire philanthropy on a thing about billionaire philanthropy. So, um, Philanthropy is a way for the billionaires to uh, launder their money. That's all it is. I thought, and, it, mm -hmm. yes, it is. I th <laughs> do you think it was weird, kid? That right at the end, she says that uh, we're you know maybe continuing the world as it is right now, but just making it a, a little look a little bit different. Isn't that the Democrats' twenty twenty two slogan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's not only that. It's it's just they don't care. They're only caring for profit. She, I like what she's saying, but yeah. she's speaking to the wrong crowd. And these people who are psychopaths, who buy our democracies, who buy our elected officials, um, they're okay with seeing the world burn so long as they're going to be safe. They dance and drink because they believe we are weak. That's it. They, they don't care what happens to the world outside their little safe bubble. So long as they earn a profit and they're okay, the rest of us, if we die, they're, they're fine with it. And that's, that goes for our politicians. I mean, it, people like Biden who've been in office for decades, they could have done something good. They could have used their power for good, but they chose not to because they gladly prostitute themselves to corporations and the billionaires, to, the, to people that this young lady is talking to. And it's unfortunate that you know she's talking to deaf ears because they'll say she's stunning and brave and that she's uh, heroic, but – They'll forget about her within a week. Yeah, I know, but I, I mean, I, th I think it is important she said it where she said it. I think I'm glad, I'm glad she said it there. I yeah. wouldn't be talking about it if she didn't say it there. And so that I'm, uh, it was funny. Just only one person applauded. <laughs> yeah. So 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 maybe so maybe there is a billionaire with a conscience. So maybe we found the diamond in the rough. I've been They're there. I'm being instructed by Malcolm, my producer, that a good example of intersectionality would be. Um, how clean water and racism are con a connected issue in Chicago. Uh-huh. Yep. Nice so, yeah, work, well, Malcolm. Nice work, Malcolm. Well, Chicago is a hyper-segregated city. It's not just segregated. It's hyper-segregated. Yeah, well, in the, when I was growing up, the, the idea was that you would take all the uh, black people and put them all together in Cabrini Green and places like that, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the worst idea in the world, that... You, you don't want to stack poor people on top of each other in a high rise. Even they, you know, I lived in a high rise dormitory in Illinois State University, and the the amount of damage that is done <laughs> in that kind of setting. <laughs> anyway, um, you don't want to do that. But anyway, so here's their here's their uh, what you go to the goalkeeper's website. Um, I thought it was going to be for hockey, but no, it's anyway. It says our mission. There they are. And it says, in 2015, world leaders agreed to 17 global goals for sustainable development to achieve a better world by 2030. 
So this, wow. It was started by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Goalkeepers is a catalyst for action toward these goals, bringing together leaders from around the world to make progress toward ending poverty and fighting inequality. Who could be against that, kid? They're, they're ending poverty and fighting inequality. Why don't you want to end inequality? Why do you just want to fight it? They want, well, they're going to end poverty. Why not end inequality? Well, they're, they're not going to do it because it's uh, ending their <laughs> racketeering job. If, if, they, if people like Bill Gates really wanted to end poverty, they could. They could, actually. Billionaires could. Like, I've been here, I'm 37 years old. I've been hearing about this fight since I was a little kid. I know. You've been hearing about it before I was uh, born. That's right. So, so, so if they could have done something, it would have been done. It's racketeering. It's how they get suckers to give them more money and also how they can launder their money. It's all a big scam. Kid, and but you don't know that goalkeepers are dedicated to accelerating progress. Oh well, I stand corrected. Then there we go. I'm, I'm, I'm. I was wrong. I, I thought I, everyone. I, 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 I think he'll accept it. <laughs> goalkeepers is dedicated to accelerating progress toward the global goals. Global goals. It's in red. I put. I did that. Using powerful stories, data, and partnerships. That's this how how do they make progress towards global goals? How do they accelerate progress towards global goals? They use powerful stories, data, and partnerships to highlight progress achieved and bring together a diverse range of leaders to address the world's major challenges. Oh boy. It sounds like <laughs> WEF shit to me, if you ask me. That's what it sounds like. Here is from Wikipedia. This is what Wikipedia says. Goalkeepers is an initiative launched by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in 2017 to bring together leaders from around the world to accelerate progress. There it is. Toward achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. SDG. That's what that's called. Sustainable Development Goals. SDG. The initiative also provides reports and data flow charts. I love data flow charts. <laughs> Oh, uh, if we're if there's something that's going to help us end world hunger, it's some data flow charts. Am I right? Uh, its core event is the annual Goalkeepers Goalkeepers Conference, <laughs> which usually takes place during Global Goals Week in the UN General Assembly. At which the Change Maker Award is bestowed to extraordinary individuals. So that's what she was getting. A change maker award because she's an extraordinary individual and they, she is driving progress in her community and country. Invitations are issued to global leaders and aspiring personnel. I'm an aspiring personality. I, I'm a personality and I aspire. <laughs> Isn't that why did I get invited? They've been per, and they've been, well, they've been personally selected by the board, but they're not going to select me. You know who, the kind of people who they do select? People like Emmanuel Macron. Mm -hmm. oh, Barack wow. Obama, Amina J. Mohammed, Erna Solberg. I don't know any of the rest of the people. Trevor Noah, I know him. Oh, him. He's had some okay. really bad takes. Past award winners have included Yusra Mardini. Oh, I'll take mine. Shake and not stirred. <laughs> <laughs> Amika George, uh, Rhea Sharma. And Nadia Murad, who later went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize. So that's that's who the goalkeepers are, and they're keeping goals. And it just sounds so WEFE, but good for that uh, young lady for speaking truth to power in front of their faces. At least one billionaire had a conscience. Anything you want to say about this? Uh, it sounds uh, like a organization that does nothing, very similar to the uh, <laughs> vile institution known as Volunteer Tourism, where you have uh, rich, idiotic... Uh, white people go to uh, nations that have been impacted by colonialism in Africa, for example, where they say they're going to build a school or a well, and they're there for a couple of months, and then they leave. And then the people uh, who were there, you know, making sure that those said tourists are okay, they tear down those buildings because, I mean, I don't trust some rich celebrity or rich person from a, a sheltered neighborhood to build a school because it's just there to, again, money launder, racketeering. If these billionaires really gave a damn, they would have done something years ago. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Your show wouldn't exist. My show wouldn't exist. No one here would be calling out the hypocrisy of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. They say they care, but they don't give a damn. They never did. They're okay with people dying. They're okay with saying we got a goal, but they never meet, uh, meet it because guess what? Next year, sell out that money. I mean, launder that money. Launder the money. 
Laundered the money. You sound like a white supremacist. Virginia Beach, Richmond, Arlington, San Jose, Miami, West Palm Beach. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets and become a premium member while you're there. Mm-hmm. 